I want to welcome everybody for coming, for all of you that, that, that showed up. It's, uh, it's great to see you all here. I know the room looks different. We all look funny with our masks on, and, and uh, we're, we're trying to do what we can to help prevent the spread. We'll talk a little bit about what's going on in the community when we get through the, the updates. But thank you all for being here. Um, we're going to kind of kick off by starting to go with, with, with any department updates that we've got. Um, so I'm just going to kind of randomly start from my left and work my way to the right in, in random order so that means Faye gets to go first and uh, any, any updates in the finance side? We're just trying to finish out, close out everything in the year and of course it's time to get started for the audit so as far as I know everything's going well. Good, good, good. Ms. Paula? Uh, human Resources is doing the same, you know, getting everything updated and for the new year and just Really fight and fire, and um, I have previously spoke with you and say and give the whole board uh, an update about the emergency pay sick leave. And I was asking if y'all look at that because it ended actually on 12 31 2020. So. Do you want to go ahead and, and read that now? That way, they've got some, some time to ask any questions while we're in the work session. Um, I'm just asking that the board um, consider. Um, whether or not they want to extend that. And what it does is it pays um, 80, well, it, the previous one from the federal government is a maximum of 80 hours. And um, we wanted to kind of reword it a little bit to be two weeks so that it will be consistent with everybody's job schedules if, if y'all would, if y'all decide to extend it. And uh, we're not actually looking at the, um, there's also an emergency FMLA part of it, but um, I, we were just kind of looking at the sick leave part and the hopes of trying to keep people, you know, from coming in sick, you know, if they didn't have leave or something, to be able to come in and use the leave. I know uh, over the last week, we well, started last week when we started to see a spike in cases within the office, and it became kind of <laughs> apparent at that point that. that we were finally starting to see what we've been worried we might start to see within the office and so a couple of departments had, had, had taken a hit there and so we were trying to look at ways and, and Paula brought it up on the, the extension of that. I know that the, the federal guideline says 80 hours obviously for us because there's different hours it, and essentially it would be a two week extension so if you're on the public safety side whether it's fire or sheriff's <laughs> office then you would go by what two weeks pay is because one is at a, a different number of hours per week. So. Um, Are most other counties doing this? Do you have any numbers? I have um, put out on my list serve and, and got some responses back. And I have actually called the Cherokee County. They are extending theirs with their own policy. Gilbert County is currently looking at it and hoping to extend theirs. And Dawson County is yes, they're looking at theirs on a case by case basis. And I will add that in 2020, we had 51 people that had to use the leave. But if it, to me, it's really important that 21 of those were actually in December, so that shows that you know it's really picking it up. Definitely. I know. Uh, just to take a look at the Department of Public Health, they, in the last two weeks in Pickens County alone, we've had 281 new cases that have uh, that have popped up, and then our positivity rate from their testing has shot. It's been on average 10 percent. It's 27.8 percent was what they were showing for the last two weeks. So we're seeing not only a, an increase in number of positives, but instead of one in ten, now it's one in four are that are getting tested are coming back positive. And I know when we get to Sloan, he's got better updates on this than I do because he's been actively uh, involved with them on a daily basis. But I think that. This is definitely something that we're going to see through March. I mean, even with the, the vaccinations. So uh, that was that was that. I also talked to the school system. They've extended it instead of to the end of the calendar year. Uh, talking to Mr. Parker with the school system, they extended it through the entire school year. So they they're doing the same thing just to kind of branch out and, and go on with with what they were doing. So uh, anything else? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Go back a road. Okay. Uh, and here's what's funny with masks. I'm actually having a hard time seeing who some people are. So I'm not gonna say Kenny and everybody. So yes, Kenny. We'll blame it on being you. So okay. Uh, with recycle right now, we're seeing a, about a 25% increase on what's coming in. 
I'm actually meeting with waste management more about saying about putting in another trash compactor to keep up with the flow because it's just getting overwhelmed. Um, we brought in a little over 13,000 small bags of trash and about 565 big ones, so that's actually that's where it increases that. And then I've got uh, loads being shipped out next week and more loads going out the week after, so we're actually moving along real good. Uh, I'm fixing to add another employee on because we can't keep up. It's just, it's just, it's just going crazy. So. Something everybody needs to be proud of. It's actually, I think right now, I think I told Johnny last week, I bailed my 300 bail. We've only been running for two months. And the bales are having about 12 to 1,300 pounds. So you're looking over 300,000 pounds we've slid out of landfill this year so far. Just from opening in November. Good. Mr. John? All right. Uh, EMA wise, I just finished all the numbers for Tropical Storm Zeta. It's been shipped in statewide. It's in Washington now, waiting on the declaration. When they open up the portal, then I can submit our numbers to start getting our maiden. Special project wise, Dragon Drive is the roundabout Dragon Drive is behind schedule and it's been put off. And the bridge on Fairview and on Thompson Lane, they're still on go. Fairview scheduled to be in construction August 21, and Thompson Lane is May of 21. And Do those you, uh, are at 100%. As no far as the, the pending weather coming in for tonight, I know that y'all been working back and forth on the road department, so yeah, right. I didn't know which one of you wanted to, to tackle Perfect. that. So. Done that his time. <laughs> there you go. Well, they did take us out. The storm watch. Okay. All right. Anything else that you got? That's all I got. And a uh, quick review last year. Uh, we did 1,200 miles of shoulder mowing. We did three miles of chip sealing. We did that ourselves with our own equipment. Put in 28 pipes. And then we had 11.3 uh, miles of paving by subcontractors. And we cleared over 450 trees off the shoulders, you know, down via storms or, you know, just high winds. Um, currently, is talking about over the weekend. Um, we were ready. We've already put out brine on the high elevations. We hit all the emergency, you know, sheriff's department, nursing homes, stuff like that. We even went ahead and hit some of the high traffic areas, Steve Tate Road. We, we were ready regardless of what it did. We've already got that out. It does better if you can get it down and let it dry before even the rain starts. Um, but we, we actually did that yesterday. So regardless of what it does tonight, you know, we've got the majority of it. You know, we hadn't done everything, but we've got the majority of it under control. And of course, we got guys on call for this weekend if it goes sideways. <laughs> yeah, they took us. I, I saw where. Uh, Johnny had sent out where they took us out of the, the watch area, but then they dropped the forecast and the temperature on Monday. So we may, in, instead of seeing it on Thursday night, we may see it on Monday night. So maybe a good training exercise. <laughs> That's about it for me. Kill go off. Uh, yes, sir. So uh, just so y'all and everyone else knows, planning and development is one of those departments that was hit hard by COVID the last couple weeks. Um, so I don't have the final numbers in yet, but it looks like we are still on track to end 2020, a um, little over $20,000 under budget and over $39,000 over our projected revenue. Um, we're still, uh, 2021 starting off strong, uh, building inspectors out today. I think we had 10 inspections on the board this morning and they were still calling in for more. So. Um, I think it's we're going to keep going and uh, hopefully we'll have another great year so uh, I mean this uh, last December uh, preliminary numbers are saying we were about seven thousand dollars over the month of December what we were last year and probably going to end up a little over uh, fifty one thousand dollars more than we were last year uh, for total revenue so uh, buildings picking up in Pickens County hard so any, I, uh, I may be remiss if you don't have a question. Whatever I'm going through, just tell me to stop. No, I'll stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll keep kind of moving back. I'm trying to keep it on one side of the room so Mary can keep the video going. So I'm going to go back here to, to Natasha.
And what's up? We're doing good. Um, 2021 has started off great over there. Um, we currently have four cats and five dogs in the shelter. During the holidays, um, the shelter was empty. So that was awesome that everyone got adopted. No one was left there for the holidays. Um, for 2020, we had 14 dog bite cases that went into 911 dispatch and 516 animal calls that went through 911 dispatch. 99 animal control calls came in to the shelter um, that never went into dispatch. So we have a little over 600 animal control calls for 2020. 253 dogs and 245 cats came into the shelter in 2020 and 271 dogs and 252 cats went out in 2020, whether it was from adoption <coughs> or through rescue. And that's about it. Still continued with the, the, I know we were talking the other day about the, the incinerator and all those on the euthanization rate, we're still able to keep that to where it's. it's yes, high. we did not euthanize. We had to euthanize one um, dangerous dog that went through the court system and was being dangerous and was being euthanized, and that was it. Any <coughs> other euthanasias were done, um, that recommended because they were sick, and that was on, I believe, four or five kittens that had came in sick and had vet treatment and they just couldn't be safe. Okay. Am I going with you? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll come over to the other side of the room and start the back and work our way forward. So, over at the rec center. So we're trying to finish up with basketball um, that we started in 2020. Uh, we'll have pretty much the rest of this month playing games, hopefully, um, provided COVID lets us uh, continue with the season. Uh, once we get basketball done, we've already started registration for baseball, t-ball, and softball. Um, registration started on January the 5th, and we'll run that through the 1st of March. Uh, after that, uh, for y'all to know, opening day is tentatively set for March the 27th. So March the 27th will be opening day. Um, looking pretty good. We've already had people registering for baseball, um, softball, and t-ball. So I think even with the, uh, the pandemic like it is, people are still trying to get out, have their kids play sports. It is still a vital part of you know, Pickens County life. They really want them to get out there. But um, other than that, we're just uh, doing our best to, you know, keep the building clean, keep the building open. Um, hadn't had any issues with COVID with the staff. That, that happened in the June of 2020 when we all got sick. Um, but uh, since then, everybody's been healthy. So. Are you still seeing many coming in or... or? And playing on the indoor, I mean, playing. playing. Yes, uh, I mean, we still have open gym um, pre pretty much every day before 5 p.m., so there's still several people people coming in. The biggest drop off we've seen is pickleball. That 65 or older crowd is just not returning like we thought it was going to. Um, it's sporadic as far as pickleball goes, but the young, the young people seem to still enjoy the rec center. So, and we're still doing rentals for parties and stuff like that, so I mean, it's. We're open for business. Okay. Mr. Fitz on the facility <laughs> side. Uh, probably management staying very busy <laughs> as normal. Um, right now the major project I'm getting numbers for is changing um, this building over to LED lighting. If you notice the lighting in here, I've already done this room and I've done the big room downstairs. Uh, there's a lot of rebates that um, Georgia Power is offering on the fixtures themselves where um, if we changed out the entire building at one time, the, the energy cost alone would be, uh, would, would make it work <coughs> within, within a year. Um, you know, over the course of the lighting and the guarantees of the number of hours that they are, we could potentially save $100,000 over the life of the fixtures, which is seven to eight years, depending on um, and depending on how they, if, if they do what they say they are, and so far they have been. Um, every light that we've changed out, the LED has just been a marked improvement. Um, besides that, going through the budget, uh, trying to find ways to trim the fat and uh, make everything as efficient as possible. He also got the, the, the Brian solution and, and went ahead and sprayed the, the front area here in the walkways around the building earlier this morning. So 
And that yeah. way, if, if we do have a freeze, then we're, we're covered. I know we were we were all working on the plan right before they, they changed the plan. So The only other okay. thing that is going to be uh, possibly that I, I want to get numbers on and approach later on in the year is the HVAC, the HVAC system in this building is archaic at best. <laughs> it's running on 13, 14 years old. We're having a lot of repair work done on it. Um, so that something that we may need to look on, look at later in the year to see about, you know, doing a more, a, a better <laughs> system itself, so. Right. Okay, that's it. Working through a capital improvement plan to, to take a look. I don't think it's just our building. I know that the, the sheriff, the jail at the sheriff's office and over, and, and you're fairly new, so. We're fairly new, we still Surprisingly are, already you know, we started to have trends. these issues, but I think that we really need to, to sit down and kind of get on the calendar and, just kind of see where we can do it so it doesn't hit us all at once because that, that would be brutal. Mr. Elrod, sir. Uh, first of all, I apologize for being late. Uh, we got tied up as usual. Uh, this was the last day of testing, and I reckon everybody found out it was the last day of testing for the public. So we were a little overwhelmed this morning, but um, anyway, the, the COVID testing, um, like I say, this, is the last, this was the last morning. It will be done. Uh, it can still be done for uh, public safety folks, um, school, and courts um, from 8 to 9 in the morning. Um, other than that, the general public has to either go to Woodstock or they have to go to Whitfield County. Or to a private. Or to a, yes. They, to of course, private. you can go to your doctor's office or you right. can go to uh, urgent cares or, or wherever. But, um, <coughs> Uh, basically, right now, it's, we phased into the vaccination part of it. Um, the majority of public safety has been vaccinated that, that wanted to get it. Um, I've got several of my staff that are getting it at, at their other places of work. And, um, but the majority of people that's wanted it has, has gotten it through this week. Um, Paving at the tank station and uh, Station 11 has been done. It's they done a wonderful job on it. Um, it's, it's working out very nicely. Um, the Tate Association has signed over the their two trucks that were still in their name. We paid the insurance and all that, but they they've signed the trucks over to us. Um, we just had to fill out a form uh, prior to you coming in. We filled out a form basically saying we we would never have less trucks than what they ever provided, which were already above what they had provided. So um, that I don't ever foresee that being a, an issue whatsoever, just because that's that's basically our second business territory that we have anyway. So um, the vaccine, uh, the vaccinations for 65 and older, there was there was a website that had gone up. I did speak with them this morning because there's been a lot of. I've had a personally a lot of phone calls on it, um, and they had basically put up a dummy site that they were going to use that you could sign up early, whatever. It was a dummy site. Somehow it got out to the public. So um, we got a lot of irate people thinking that they were on the schedule or not on the schedule, um, and. I'd, I'd be honest with you, I just feel sorry for them girls down there because <laughs> everybody's looking for this vaccine and right now everybody's going, I want to it. No, I haven't. But, you know, it's, it's just a mess right now. Um, that site was never supposed to get out, but you you can call uh, the health department on Monday. Anybody 65 and older can call the general number and be put on a list at that point. Um, that's when they're starting it. and. From there, it's just going to be, honestly, a, a, an adventure. I, I, that's all I can say for those those girls down there. It's going to be an adventure. I mean, um, they're down one nurse, so they only have two um, that are in the building. So, um, as far as the 911 center, I, I will ask Christy if she'll kind of give you a little bit of update on the phone system that we're fixing to uh, be putting in in March. Um, it's basically an upgrade. They can't, basically what it boils down to, they can't fix the phones that we have down there now. So 
we had to get an upgrade, but she can maybe give you a little more update on, on that phone system. Sloan, before yes. we move Sorry. to that, I'm going to ask you, I'm one of those that went on the dummy site and have an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Dr. Proctor got me an appointment on there. Um, he does that a lot. I've heard that a lot. Um, I call me that Dr. Proctor, but I'm just saying. For next Tuesday. So do you think that appointment's good, or do I just need to call again, or what's the deal on it? Um, I, I, not to get myself in a bind. Uh -huh. You took care of the show up the same time you're supposed to. <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> don't give a fuck about that. that. <laughs> uh, Please don't call me. I'm not doing the scheduling, baby. I know before we get Christy to do the other, I, I don't know if you guys are aware, but Sloan and, and Shane Callahan, the fire marshal, have actually every single day been working nonstop with the testing. Um, I don't think the Department of Public Health could have done the testing that they've been doing had the two of them not right. shown up on a daily basis and and uh, and continuing done it. So I know that, that this is a more informal work session, but I do believe he needs to be formally recognized and changed as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they're working closely with with the sheriff's office right now with plans for any kind of a mass vaccination um, to be able to to to, to kind of hopefully be one of the first communities to, to be the, the the widest vaccinated community with what they're doing. I know they're working on supply, but they're they're working very closely and I know Johnny's been working closely with them too to to be prepared for that because I think over the next month we're gonna see a lot that's gonna rapidly change and evolve on a daily basis. But he is um, I mean, he's kind of made it happen uh, yes. when it goes. So I do want to, in, you know, in, in front of you guys, make sure he's he's recognized for for doing a phenomenal job mm -hmm. with, uh, with getting that going. And now, they may call us and tell us that we're out of there, and, and uh, <laughs> yeah. we have to undo everything I just said. But at the moment, they're very appreciative of him. So I think uh, they'll need you going forward. Don't you think they'll need you going forward with the vaccination? Oh, uh, it's well. We had a uh, conference call basically the other day um, with the Department of Health, um, and basically without saying anything, they basically said, without a doubt, my guys and, and myself will have to end up basically helping, assisting with the shots and getting it through. Um, there's a huge concern on Monday, so I'm going to start down there, and I, and I have actually talked to uh, the chief deputy as well and let him know that we're going to have probably if nothing else we're going to have a huge problem with parking um, it's just not really a a great location for the numbers that that we're anticipating on monday which i know they're scheduling it out but you're still going to have those that are going to show up and i've i personally witnessed it um, and those are the ones that are not going to be happy that they showed up and, and couldn't get it. So it's yeah, so a, it's still. I'm kind of I'm, I'm more concerned on the law enforcement side. I, I don't care to assist with the parking, but I'm, I'm more concerned on the law enforcement side. I mean, I, all I can do is step in between them. I can't, you know, mm -hmm. really do anything. And there's been some that have been pretty anxious, and I get it. Mm -hmm. um, this is anxious time that we've dealt with. Um, well, I want so, to second what Chris said. Good job. You've done a phenomenal job for them. Thank you, thank you for that. So even though you tried to get out of speaking the first time, <laughs> your, your boss, Mr. Elrod here, has now pointed it back to you on the 911 phone system. So. Our current system has been in since 2004. And um, AT&T, like someone said, says it, we're just on a wing and a prayer that it stays up until March. The, um, they'll be replacing the phone system on the computer and then desktop phones and we'll also have a laptop we need to take it to a backup center still have all of our phone information do you have any service interruption or have they worked on making sure that yeah it's still it's coming still through AT&T so it's just going to be a, a plug and play oh, okay now, uh, typically they take down one console put everything in and then move around the room so we still got everything up good that will be coming in March. In March? Yeah. Ms. Reeves, how about over in the tax commissioner's side? I know we shifted away from departments, but you're next in line. Thank you, sir. Everything's going, going good in the office. We just got through our busiest season with a, 
property tax deadline. Um, we got, uh, like Justin said a second ago, we got hit pretty hard in December with uh, with COVID. Had a couple of uh, folks that had to be out during the busiest time of the year. But our team is great. They they worked through that. We got everything done on time, and you know they they, they just done a phenomenal job in spite of all that. And on a positive note, on I know that you know there was concerns earlier about how collections were going to come in with COVID and every and, and with everything that's went on this year. But a year mm -hmm. in, we still got a couple of days uh, that's that's um, still hanging out there. But as of right now, from everything that we've accounted for, our collection is actually higher than it was last year. We've actually we've had more actually came in this year than it did last year at this time. So we've actually done quite well. Um, we just got the preliminary documents for uh, for the pre-built mobile homes. Uh, working on that, uh, working with the assessor's office on that. As usual, they got it to us in, a, in just a, a, a just a great timely manner. They're, they've always been great to help us with everything that we've needed. Any question that we've had, we've always been able to go to Roy and his team, and they've just always done a great job with that. So those bills should go out this week, and so everything everything's going smoothly. Major Yergin, with anything of the sheriff's office you well, guys got going on? I haven't got anything from last year, but I can update you on some things that we've been currently working on. New Year's Eve, we brought in extra patrols for uh, any any disruption or parties. Uh, luckily, it rained, very little disruption or, or calls. I mean, we did make four DUIs that night, uh, which is good. Recently on the election, we had bring in 12 additional elections. Uh, officers man the polls because of some credible threats Cherokee and some other counties have received. Luckily things went real well. Uh, no no disruption or, or uh, problems at, at any of the polling places or at, at the uh, actual election office. We stayed there at midnight because they closed so everything went real well. You were talking about COVID. I did some numbers this morning and uh, the county, the county has had uh, 1,631 confirmed cases since it started. Uh, so that's like 5.1 percent. And I did our sheriff's offices this morning, keeping up with it. Uh, we've had 25 employees either suspected or tested positive. So that's an infection rate of like 21 percent. So I mean, you know. Public safety, I don't know if Sloan's been affected, but we're four times more likely than the general public to be in contact. So, wow. that's what wow. we're talking about. Yeah. 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 We currently have three out, but luckily it came in stages. Our infections were earlier, <laughs> thank goodness, because if they all came at once, you know, we couldn't operate or we had 88 employees. <clears throat> that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. You're saying you have anything else to uh, add? No, Mitch covered it. COVID is hitting us. We're just kind of plucking along. It does help, as Paula said, to have the the pay because they don't have to worry um, when they're out. Absolutely. Yeah, they can stay out when they're sick, which is yeah. great. Yeah. And not try to come to that. Yeah. It's been tough, but we'll make it. Well, Mr. Dobbs has, has graced us with his presence and he came in with his fancy mechanical operation so how are you sir i'm making it thank you for asking good uh people it's now 2021 maybe it'll be better than last year it wouldn't take much to do that but talking about busy seasons this is the time when all the new property owners and the old property owners come in and update their returns on their properties they got between january 1st and april 1st to do that any changes they've got combinations or splits or anything of that nature the other thing is homestead exemption. If you're a new owner, you own the property January 1st, you've got your driver's license updated, it's your only homestead, you come in and see us before April 1st and that homestead exemption will apply for this year. So thank the media for being here to get that information out because people get confused about that sometimes. Uh, the other thing that we do at this time of the year on our personal property accounts, that's going to be if you got your fancy bass boat, if you got your uh, Uniloader, you got your business, you got your machinery, equipment, furniture, fixtures that are returned on the personal property digest. We have also mailed those forms out to all the account holders. 
people update those returns because that's what we're going to go off of for the next year's digest is what you tell us your updates are. So just because it's not a bill, don't throw it in the trash. <laughs> let us know if it's the same or let us know if it's changed and it just makes everything go smoother all the way through, especially <laughs> on the tax commissioner's end later on. Uh, the other thing that we've got going on this time this year, we're doing a new aerial flight of the county. Next week we will have people on the ground doing the ground control for all the points in the county. So they'll be out there, they'll have their little badges and vests on and everything. Of course, everywhere you go in Pickens County, there's people out working on the sides of the road with cones and vests and things like that. So we'll have a few more people in on that. I'm looking forward to getting that done this year. And uh, as everybody here knows, every department head, we're just growing more and more every day. And uh, thank everybody for helping everybody get things done and serving the public. And I really do hope 2021 is better than last year. I think everyone yeah. is. So, yeah. so, last night wasn't the best uh, start we all were looking for on a, on a national level, but on a local level, I think we can, we can do our part for sure. Mr. Harvey's hiding over there in the corner, sir. I thought I'd stay hid well enough to yeah. see well, If you wouldn't move your chair, I know what you caught it, but if you move it, I'll just stand up and let everybody get a good look. Look, uh, basically everything has kind of calmed down in the county. We're getting a lot of uh, dumping, and we usually do at the end of the year, because of Christmas. Uh, people are getting smarter. They're not putting their names and addresses in the, in the trash like they used to. So I'm getting a lot of calls out there. When I do find somebody, they definitely will get a citation. So anybody that can, knows anybody that's got dumping problems throughout the county, if you'll get them in touch with me, if we can get the names, addresses, any way we can contact them and locate them, they will get a citation. Uh, I usually try to make them clean it up too. Uh, second thing is, uh, I've been in contact with uh, Justin Kilgore on trying to update some of our ordinances. Uh, some of them are, they really need to be updated and uh, I've been talking to Justin on that. We're looking at it and I think he's given us probably around a two or three month timetable that we probably need to get some things written down and get it worded so that we can get these ordinances changed. And I think the last thing, is uh, records keeping. I've been in, talking to the new commissioner about trying to update the set record system uh, with the marshal's office so that we can have better records when people come in and want a, uh, what is it, uh, open records request. It's a lot better to have really professional looking records than to have something that I just type mm -hmm. out. So we're working on that, and as far as I know, that's about it for right now. Oh, by the way, the, the courts are really behind on working these citations. Some of the citations I wrote back January, February, March of last year has still not gone through the process of being, you know, completed through the court system. And I, when I went over there and talked to the ladies over there, they're wanting, unless it is absolutely necessary, don't write any citations right now. And I, pretty much I've been handling everything on, a, I guess what you call a public relations situation, uh, trying to work with the public, see if we can work and clear some of the problems up without having to put somebody in court because they're so far behind over there now, there's no telling when they'll get caught up. So, any questions? Good. Thank you all for, uh, for being here to do that. Um, I know the next item that we had on the agenda for discussion to, to look at was on the board meeting schedule for 2021. I think that Ms. Lisa has put together the, uh, the calendar using the same first Thursday for the works uh, sessions and then on the third Thursdays for the commissioner's meeting. I would like to um, just for the point of discussion for today, I know that we'll, we'll look at this when we get to the board meeting. Keep the meeting scheduled the same for this upcoming meeting. Keep the days the same for the whole year. But after we get past January, possibly consider the fact of moving that back till six instead of five thirty. 
Um, we've received a lot of information from, from people that work, that, that have a difficult time getting here by 5.30 to, to that way we can make it available. Um, hopefully we can kind of create uh, just a, a, an open opportunity for that, but that would be the only, as far as for me, uh, request that I've got when we look at that calendar. Right. I'm in the 6 o'clock idea. Mm -hmm. um, since we were videoed, a lot of people tell me they play every meeting on no pickings. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that it will it would change things, so can we, uh, I'm okay with changing it, and then if we don't see a difference in attendance, could we look at it going back? It back down. Yeah, yeah. And maybe, okay. maybe set it, uh, if we just set the calendar for so many months. Mm -hmm. At that, just to see if we see a difference in attendance and yeah. go from there. Yeah. Do you have a legal issue with that? You, you set your, in the January meeting, you do set your, your, your monthly Okay. okay. I, I think that's, that's, that's why, that way we can see. It, it may or may not affect where, where people, people come in person that want to have any kind of a, a comment. But that was the only thing I had. Other than that, the schedule I believe I believe works. I think it works earlier rather than later for the staff, especially if they do stay. I don't want to push it too late. Um, during the meetings, I know we've we've done a great job of recognizing um, the anniversary dates. You've done an incredible job with that. I'd like to open that up for department heads and elected officials that may want to recognize their employees that just don't have a venue to do that, so that we can add a, a line item in the in the meetings so that any elected official or department head that, that has an employee that they want to recognize if, if the fire department or, or tax commissioner or the sheriff, whoever may have an employee that they want to do a recognition, we'll just reach out to them to make sure we get that information beforehand and, and just have a, an open time for them to to reward. Because I know we've got out of the out of the 400 countywide, we've got some really good employees and I think the more chances we can show them our appreciation, the better. So. Um, would like to, to see us add that line item. That's, um, that's that's um, a couple of things I wanted to bring up, um, and I think I forwarded it to you and Jerry. I got a, an email from a guy about, I get more ma emails about trash pickup than any other yeah. thing. <laughs> um, and I did respond, I think maybe you saw my response and said that the um, the sheriff's office as well as the county road department have been short of help and and tried to give him some reasons I, you know i don't know anything other than that to tell him well i met with judge weaver actually uh because the accountability courts with their community service we've not taken advantage of community service workers in, in a while and there's been a reason it's not been as much for uh, the lack of having people that need to work their hours, it's been more you have to have somebody that's in the road department or another office that can, can oversee and supervise and sign up on those hours. So she is more than willing and has expressed an interest in, in working with us closely to provide us community service workers. Um, I've been meeting and, and talking with, uh, with Kurt, with the road department, about ways that we can kind of incorporate that to, to get them actively out working. Uh, the sheriff is 100% is on board. They've had an issue with having to keep the inmates actually quarantined, but I've, I've talked to him to see how we can collectively work with him, and then we've even went as far as talking to, to Kenny with Recycle, because now without taking construction debris, we've got to have a dumpster to put the stuff that's found right. uh, on there, and I think that they're working that issue out to where it could be housed at a, at a different location. It's not public access to to be able to get that stuff picked up. So I hope it's the hardest season because it's right at freezing temperatures and um, we talked about trying to get this going on right before mowing season at okay. least so that we start getting it picked up because it has, it's, it's grown, um, it, I mean it's always been somewhat a problem but I'd say we're probably at the worst. Yeah. Um, I know in the email it also talked about graffiti but that's actually yeah. state property where the, where the graffiti okay. uh, issue was at. Um, there's still, a, you know, from a law enforcement perspective, if we can kind of get creative to work with, with, with both the marshal's office and the sheriff to try to see if maybe through the use of camera systems we can start identifying who's, because every time they go repaint it, it gets destroyed um, at the Burnt Mountain Overlooks, the, the, the specific location, but if we could find a way to start you know, making an example occasionally of those that are doing it, maybe we can 
can change that culture to, to doing it or if there's a product that we can put down that, that makes it more difficult to, to damage I don't uh, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, it's probably one of the prettiest spots and, and greatest destinations in the county, and it's constantly destroyed. So uh, I, I agree completely on that. The other um, thing for discussion, <clears throat> we had talked a little bit when we could talk at the end of the year about um, uh, cabinetry for mm -hmm. the commissioners. And I was wondering if we could maybe get a couple of bids on that to yeah. get that running. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you had mentioned that a few of you had, had gone to look, and, and <coughs> I'm assuming that we kind of know what we're wanting the, the bids in that direction. The Board of Education, Lisa and Faye and I went over there, and they had a great setup, I thought. And uh, I thought if we just used some local people and got some bids, um, Richard Slater, Tommy Boswell, I'm sure y'all know, uh, Jerry knows a couple, and just sort of see what we're looking at on that. But, but I like the it's idea of we can get that moving a little bit. Okay, we'll start to work on our end to, to get some bids coming in and see what what it would come. I know it's a, a strange layout right now. We, we came in yesterday, Jason Jason brought the crew in and, and started cleaning chairs out just to, to do our best to to spread it out to not have too many people in, in one room and that we're not all too close. And if anybody thinks that I'm a mass person, you if you knew me, you would understand that this is probably driving me more crazy than anybody else in this room right now because I keep wanting to tug at it and pull it down. And, uh, but I think that, that we've got to, we've just got to make every effort we can to, to do one, to protect everyone in our office, but the public that we're serving too. So if you see the signs on the doors, uh, uh, saying please wear your mask when, when people are coming in, uh, we're, we're, we're being gracious with the way that we're doing it. It's not uh, trying to put a, the government telling you what to do, but we're also trying to make sure people are, are aware that we're trying to keep them safe. Um, I know I was talking to Brian and I emailed back and forth a little bit to try to look at the rec center and there, theirs is a different situation because of what people are coming there to do uh, and so at, outside of the public areas walking in in the lobby we've not really tried to make any kind of a change in, in their environment but um, and then over at the animal shelter we, we've posted <coughs> over there as well because of the close contact there's no way to socially distance in their lobby at all so um, Regardless of philosophical views or political views, I think that we just making an effort to show we're going to do what we can do, um, and then continue to try to keep keep things safe. Yeah. So, um, y'all have any other discussion items for this one? Well, I move that we adjourn. We need a motion to to adjourn. The second. Any other discussion on that? Then I say we adjourn. Uh, we did run over just a little bit, so I know that we had a 10.30 call for the, the other, and we'll, we'll immediately kind of move straight into that if y'all are, are ready to go with that.